this morning. I hope that you guys are doing well. Uh, today is the last class of your know, administrative uh, leadership and no, no, educational leadership and administration. So last time, yeah, last class in the last class we talk about the, the uh, making decisions and then think about we evaluate a, uh, something and. We gotta be decided to change, uh, do something, and then what? We gotta change implant. Implant is a kind of a change, right? So uh, we gotta talk about the, the organizational change, and then maybe we can reform and we can kind of yeah, create new things and kind of we can do up the old things. And anyway, so we need to change to be better. And we can we implement stagnant, maybe it's stable, but sometimes it's stagnant and then no improvement and no um, um it yeah it's kind of it's easy to be behind uh, from the, uh, the trend of society. Anyway, so let's talk about today organizational change. What's the change? Maybe to eat, right? And then maybe we can throw a things totally and then we forget about it and we can do something totally different, yeah, new, totally different, right? And uh, something really uh, new and totally different. And then what? Maybe then maybe we can adjust inside the same system and same program and then there is a change so um just think about a situation is a public the public demands a more significant connection between the effective schooling and national development in the right what to uh, dramatic change in the demo uh, demographic and economic circumstances. That's true. How can we make uh, effective, right? And then how can we provide better education? And how can we equip the student? But just think about it 10 years ago and society is totally different from now. And then how can we renovate and reform and yeah, change? So, change is to alter behavior. Sometimes people I talk about behavior and then we could structure, yeah, change structure and procedure and purpose or output of some unit within organizations. So, it's not just a uh, uh, structure, right? Sometimes we can change the rules and regulations and uh, we can Maybe adjust the whole organization structure. We can uh, nowadays. I think so. We don't need this. So maybe we can add other like the procedures there. We have regulation here and follow the, the policies and if they change the policy and the procedure is different like this. And so yeah, Caldwell uh, he suggests uh, four step models. And okay, if you want to change the myself, uh, uh, you got to do this way, uh, follow these procedures. And then, uh, first of all, he said uh, identification and priority ranking of needs. Okay, what is our need? And then maybe it's a lot of, yeah, uh, there's a lot of list of needs. And then maybe we can write down and then prioritize which one comes first. And that's the first step. And then second step is the development of a broad strategic and specific plan. And it's not a detail, but the, uh, the develop a strategy, right? And there is a, a little bit broad, but strategy is there. You know, strategy is broad. And then there is a really need a specific plan for that. And then Implant, implant the selected approach and what decision and then assessment of the outcomes. 
So that is a uh, he uh, he uh, can uh, suggest uh, yeah, post models and then theories and then uh, the five step models calls and then calls it okay uh, we need awareness something is not we need something change it's awareness there and something oh and then there's uh, what kind of interest is yeah there. And then, what's the interest is for students, for teachers, for schools, for community, and maybe it's a list, and then what? And then we're gonna evaluate. Evaluate. And then uh, there is a, a trial list there. And evaluation comes out, some solution, and then trial is there. Trial is there, and adoption is there. Mean the trial, trial mean the you can temporarily implant and maybe feedback after that and evaluate and then you can adopt or just right. That's your yeah, five step models calls. Another model is a rec yeah, recording cycle models, yeah, peppers and uh, selenic. Uh, they they say that change take place as a consequence of the influence of new situation. That's true. And environment factor county environment factors during the pursuit of organization goals. And then, so uh, they think about there's always uh, uh, sometimes we cannot control the environment of our, our factors, but we gotta consider. First environment factors. Here we see like more so, um, how can you support you know, our teachers for better education? You can provide a better uh, facility to take rest and to study and prepare. And what about uh, outside of the, yeah, maybe uh, how can uh, so the outside playground? How can provide a safe playground for students, right? So anyway, so always, and then they think the change takes place. Yeah, always in society as society changing and new things coming out, and we gotta adjust. Like uh, pandemic changed a lot of things, right? Uh, before there's no uh, what's up. Um, and online education, uh, online education, and like that, and private, especially for the uh, primary and secondary school educations. But a uh, pandemic forced them school to do that, right? Like that. So uh, change is the primary meaning by which organizational system remain fit. So. There's a lot of change, how can you get along with the change and fit into the society? And how can you be stay healthy in the organizations? And how can the organizations are able to co-create the, the different and new demanding? That one is an aspect of change, right? That is a change. Yeah, there is uh, types of changes. Uh, what kind of uh, types of changes? Uh, maybe if you are from a dictative uh, political system governed the country, uh, and there's a really a forced change if you don't have punishment is there, right? There is a uh, enforced change. So, oh, we need to change in what's a, oh, what's a external force kind of a, a push to the change, right? And that's why, uh, what's the uh, result of needs? I didn't know. Yeah, needs is going to be a, 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 a 
So the mean instance account will resolve by external forces. That is a chain. So inverse changes or functions at the whims of those who have authority, influence, and a political club. Right? I already told you. So um, like the state or federal mandate and what the impact of community pressure groups on schools like that. There is a enforced change. If you don't and keep kind of pushing and pushing like this. And then um, like this, and Christian schools uh, face a lot of losses, like a Biola University, because of the, just think about nowadays and uh, a lot of issues about sexualities, and then and Biola is a Christian school, and well, they have their own philosophy for education based on the Bible. And then they don't want to open that area and then they want to keep the, the biblical doctrine and then keep uh, pressures, groups, and zooms, and a lot of things happen, right? There's an enforced change, enforced change. What about expedient change? Expedient change is uh, like involves kind of you know, leading immediate concern is generally short term and reactionary. Expedient is like really quick changes. And there's a kind of last minute change in the school body or well, sometimes you know, think about and situation storm damages a school building and how can you do that? You gotta fix it. Right? Maybe the money is from the yeah, yeah, con, yeah. and yeah, kind of con, 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 the, uh, con, was it con oh, I don't remember the vocabulary anyway. So already kind of yes, yeah, does aside the money for the, the emergency situation and then you can use you know, fix it. That's the expedient. Not much kind of discussion and then oh, we need it, that's why we gotta change it. That's the expedient, yeah, expedient changes. What about uh, essential change? Essential change is not from the outside, it's from uh, inside. Just think about meaning is essential change is a kind of as a, it's a we gotta change the basic goals and directions, like right? And then it seems like uh, the vocabulary uh, seeming uh, kind of implies, but um, the essential change is like if you change this one internally and then impact the others. So think about it's a, a driven by the ability of the system monitor itself and the work toward improved performance and then they needed to change. Right? And the example is updating the curriculums. And if you change the internal curriculums and the what, this is all and you cannot get along with the societal change and then we got to keep the student to be into the society and then we got to change. That is an essential change. Not often this one. If you cannot change every year and then there is no direction. Maybe this one is really fundamental and then you got to really be careful. You got to evaluate, analyze, analyze and evaluate very well and then we can do it, right? Essential changes, like the curriculum changes. What about planned changes? Maybe uh, it's, you know, you gotta kind of plan it before and then and certain times coming and then evaluate and change it, right? It's really uh, this, uh, your plan, your plan to change and the delivery of time to direct the change with the set of the, you know, predetermined goals and values. And maybe every five years and 
uh, think about bones and then think about uh, values, right? Um, our church, uh, our, I, I was uh, in the board, uh, not now, but and we have the, the goal of the ministry, church, our ministry, and then every year we pick one topic and then based on what survey, and then we pick it and then evaluate and try to uh, develop a new direction of ministry. That's a plan, every year. So goals and values. If we do to up, yeah, often and what? It's easy to lose the direction, right? So that's a plan to change. So maybe uh, every five years, every ten years, because maybe our value can change, right? And that is the uh, I think about the strategic planning we already talked about last week. And then if you have it, and then. Yeah, plan it there, and then it's not that big, yeah, um, uh, it's not that hard to do that. What about unplanned change? That one is, is kind of a hard, right? It's really hard, and maybe in in the change you made, you know, makes a lot of people mad. So, and maybe unplanned change is an enforced change. A dictator coming out who has already authority and then what you gotta change this and then change everything one day that is a unplanned change really unanticipated right so force them to do that school system and organization that the uh, unplanned maybe it can influence a lot to the system's effectiveness and about it happened and the here is the unplanned changes that generally meet the needs of an external agent rather than the needs of the organization being changed right so they don't know the inside what's going on that's why we have to be very yeah, we have to be careful though sometimes we don't know what's going on and when we see the outside and then uh, it's a lot of problem. It's a lot of problems, and uh, it's not effective. And then I had experience, though. And then uh, my organization before I worked for, and then um, they say something about future, but uh, they don't develop the in, in uh, infrastructure. So when I outside, and then I'm an outsider, uh, and then I is always suggest something, but uh, they don't, they never do anything yeah, to develop because the culture is different. My perspective is really different and their kind of organization culture is really different, right? So that's a kind of barrier. So it's not easy. So maybe this one is a yeah, unplanned yeah, change, is a yeah, small kind of yeah, and functional school district that uh, result from the budgetary need of the safe rather than the dysfunction in the local district. And then maybe they can merge it together, right? Merge together. A small school is there, but uh, uh, you cannot handle it and then maybe, maybe merge it together and then make effective education. And that is uh, maybe it's not planned. And because of the, the population decrease, because because of the budgeting issues, and uh, it's a complicated and but it's not planned, but unplanned, but yeah, you can do it. So sometimes, like um, they don't school doesn't want to do it, but still because of the whole situation, a little bit yeah, changed and what uh, they need to adopt this, whether it's a planned or it's a uh, uh, unplanned or essential like this and there is some uh, resistance to change some people want to keep the old way so we don't have any much problem why we want to change like this and then some people really innovative and then oh yeah society change like this and now yeah, we need to change this but 
the other side is that, well, no, we don't have any problem. Maybe if they need it, they could learn by themselves like this. And then what is the, the uh, uh, why people are really resistant to change? Uh, they have come and surprise and fear of unknown. Because think about you know, people are really school staffs and teachers and really used to the old environment, but we don't know when they change and what happens. Sometimes they need to learn something new, like uh, uh, online education during the pandemic. And a lot of people, all the people, really struggle with. Yeah learning the how to run the kind of operating the whole system of computers and how to do that it was really hard for them yeah there is a fear so unknown and then sometimes they are very scared of the world uh, learn something new another resistance is a lot uh, resistance is climate of mistrust they people cannot trust the world Leaders, right? That's why always people who don't trust and then always against them. I can see a lot of things at churches and then there's a leaders, pastors, and they want to implant new things. But the other side, no, we don't have money and the situation, but behind, that's a supervision, one, but behind it, they don't like it. They cannot trust the past, right? Pastor. And same. Uh, maybe uh, uh, administrators don't have a lot of uh, integrities and uh, it's not reliable, it's not credible, and then happens. Another the resistance, the reason is the what? People are really scared of the failure. Why? What if we fail? Maybe. All the world was bad by it. That's why I don't want to attend. Sometimes, uh, if there is a change, maybe uh, like nowadays a lot of layoff, right? And and also, also company, they say start the layoff from yesterday, something like that, and then they announce it. And a lot of they lost the status and they lost the job. Because of the change. New structures come in and then new people are coming and take over them because they don't know about the new things. And then the company or the organization uh, hire the people who knew, right? Sometimes uh, peer pressure. And just so uh, once a peer to follow that way, and if, uh, if I don't in the world, right? I just follow that one. That's why resistance is coming from the peer pressure. What about some the disruption of the your cultural tradition or group relationship? That's uh, from the early um, cult collective cultures, right? Uh, like me, and then we are really think about groups, yeah. right? And a lot of people are think about families, and then uh, it's hard to change. So I read yeah, some people's and different culture every night and then try to see, understand who they are and then uh, their religions and then uh, how, can we, yeah, how can we reach out to them as a Christian, so what kind of, yeah. So we pray for the people who we don't know, I don't know. And then that I can learn a lot of cultural uh, issues, especially when they open to the Christianity. That you could have cultural and religious yeah, traditions there. What about personality conflicts? Yeah. The leaders, administrators to dominate, and, and as a, it's a little bit different from yeah, others, and then I'm all right with it. Maybe somewhat, yeah, the leader, the administrator is already. Uh, as a, the dominant, but still one of your representative is the yeah, uh, teacher's group is very dominant, maybe they are kind of your company, right? 
and there's a personality conflict. So, or sometimes a lack of tact or or you know, play. So I, I know, oh, if you know someone is really logical and uh, they want to see some evidence and statistics like that, even though it's not all about it, and there is no, and then there is register. But uh, it means that change is not easy, though, right? Change is not easy. There's a, yeah, there are some, yeah, several reasons are there, but more reasons out there, actually, when you try to change. So how can we change though? There is a new strategies and models. And here we the shoes and comings and then uh, they kind of suggest that here is a, a process to change and then strategy, right? And then they say that, okay, first of all, if you want to change and then you're going to identify the problem. What is the problem? in the organizations. And if you have this one, it was a benefit because but this one is still in the organization, why is the problem problematic? And you got to still uh, wait which one is your uh, kind of your discourse and which one is your still available. It may be a little problem is not uh, Big, but still, the problem is getting growing and growing and bigger and bigger. And then, but still, because of this one, and then production is going down, and then effectivity, efficiency is going down, and then what happens? So, we got to identify the problem first. And second, and then consultation. Sometimes we are not, and well, we are not a, so uh, expert, and then. Uh, we can consult outside and we can discuss inside. We, we need to get some consultations, right? And then uh, collect the data and uh, preliminary, yeah, preliminary kind of diagnosis. And then uh, not just based on that one, and then we can collect the data and then how can they support, right? And then uh, we'll consider what's like, so kind of the degree of what severities, right? And then, well, feedback based on that one. How can we understand the problem? And join the diagnosis of the problem and then, okay, you can put together and diagnosis and then uh, how can we implement? And then you have a plan it and the action is there. And then uh, there's an uh, evaluation. Evaluation and then uh, yeah, still uh, getting, getting the data from the uh, action. And then we got evaluate again and adjust like this. That's one of the uh, uh, strategies that uh, Hughes and then Cummings yeah, suggested. That's a procedure. But, uh, Schuller said it, okay, uh, it's hard to change because he said that uh, there is a several reasons and then the risk of change is seen as greater than the risk of a state of quo. Yeah, it's a, still, you know, they don't want to take a risk and then there is some uh, kind of reactions there. And the, People uh, feel loyal to others who identify with the old way. That's why there is kind of yeah, uh, reactions there. And but still, um, what is the role models for the new way to not yet exist? There is a kind of resistance there. It's kind of a connection with the, the uh, resistance, but this is assurance. And then I think the slides is kind of switched. Yeah, I worked there, but yeah, a little bit sweet. Yeah, I think the old days are sweet. And then there is people perceive their own incompetence on the new way and the fear. That's why they are they are really uh, struggling to adopt, right? 
And the people feel overloaded and overwhelmed and they reduce. And the people are skeptical and want to be assured of the soundness of the view of God. Right? They are not sure yet. They don't know. People feel hidden agenda of, yeah, on the part of the, the reformers. Okay, they have their own agenda. Maybe political and then they want to do something. They are really thinking of, they think about it. And people anticipate loss of the status and then uh, less in the quality of life. If you change too much work and there is no quality of life. And People honestly see that the proposed change is a bad idea. Why? They are not, they are not, they are not, they are, they are, they are not being the why. Why? That is your should have said, okay, uh, uh, people are a little bit uh, kind of uh, uh, skeptical on the changes, but um, keep that in mind with the resistance that we saw, and we are still, uh, still we are going on the how can we change the strategy, uh, strategically, right? And there is some is there, and then maybe uh, this process and then helps to kind of persuade the people, and then uh, uh, so that people work you know, work together. And moreover, yeah, uh, um, so this one is yeah, uh, connected to the previous slide. The overall communist culture of the educational system will give a major impact on the alternative, of, yeah, uh, create lasting change. And then, uh, if we wanna think about change. And even though it is strategical, and then first of all, we gotta know that the climate. And even though we have a strategy to change, but it's a uh, you know, the climate and school culture is really uh, should be considered. Why? The climate is a perception of expected work behavior based on existing pattern of behavior and existing organizational characteristic. That, that's why we got to understand the whole things. And what about culture? The knowledge of how things are and how things ought to be, right? It's a basic assumption and belief shared by a number of organizations. It's, it, we, we cannot see it. And climate is a kind of, there's older than already we can see, but Culture, even though we cannot see and people share something, right? And because, yeah, if we want to change, and whether it's, yeah, uh, uh, stat uh, whether it's strategic or not, and then we got to consider the uh, uh, organization climate and their cultures. Uh, that one is, yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, slides a little bit change it and then we can keep going on to you know, so, uh, 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 strategy for the plans, right? Changes that yeah, no. uh, strategy for the changes. And we are, we are talking about we talk about the uh, hues and comings and then uh, so I'm gonna change the third slide and then uh, strategy for the yeah the leaks and uh, Nicholas and Nicholas and then was uh, uh, he kind of suggest some strategy to change uh, based on the chins and Benin, Ben, Benin. So there is kind of yeah, uh, some empirical rational criteria is there and then normative re re yeah or re yeah. Educative principle there, powerful civic there, and then environment, you know, adaptive is yeah, raised there. So he said that uh, he divided, categorized for 
uh, 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 air, yeah, waves, and then uh, Nicholas said that it's an empirical, empirical, empirical rational is an underlying assumption that are uh, that people are rational being and we follow their own best interests when they know them, know them. So. Uh, uh, selection factors include the casting about, uh, about casting about on targeting convert with assist in the supporting the proposed changes. So, um, empirical rationality is the yeah, principle is that uh, people are rational. Uh, Depend. I think it depends on the culture. So maybe American culture is not that much problem with this one. But if you go to the uh, the collective society cultures, and then sometimes people are really rational, but they follow they do the, yeah, they do a rational behavior, but still uh, group thinking and what uh, and rest of the uh, group. Yeah, family uh, orientations and maybe collectively yeah, itself can be really hard for the people who be rational, right? Sometimes and because of their belief and because of their cultures, and they just follow their own, even though they are irrational. But this is what is a uh, rational, uh, empirical, and so already shown and then but yeah uh, rational so they use that one so if you uh, see the kind of yeah uh, shows all things and then uh, uh, well, so the people who really need to know and then it's easy to yeah well, so change right and normative re-educative yeah one is the other underlying assumption that people are social beings and we adhere to the cultural norms and values. Okay, it's not always a uh, yeah, head. It's a, people are really hard to orient. Right? Yeah, I think it's easy to yeah. So selection factors include that uh, includes that the fact that wow change is really focus on culture. This is really focus on culture. And which is modified slowly, but that the informal or formal structure must be taken into consideration because we change the cultures, right? That is another category of, you know, about changes. And then just think about the first one is yeah, uh, uh, it's a really uh, how you pursue your pursuit of the people, right? Empirical and then rational. Uh, obtaining their rationality. But this is normative and real educative is really focused on their cultures and values, right? It's a little bit different. So when you change, you're going to think about that part. And then what about progressive yeah, changes? And then uh, the underlying assumption is that well, people are compliant and they follow, they follow. Right, and they do what they are that they were told what can be they are made to do, and they regularly follow the direction very well without resistance. Right, so in this, and then like uh, we already talked about the device of models, and then authority is power, authority is power in the model. So uh, selection factors include the time and the uh, seriousness of a threat. You gotta think about it. Time and uh, serious, 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 yeah, seriousness of a threat, and then you couldn't be, you know, force and then change, right? So if the threat is a grave and time is short, the choice, yeah, this choice is very useful, right? There's no way though. Sometimes that's why so authorities and what so officers and uh, yeah, intervened and tried to solve the problem like school shootings, right? Yesterday occurred.
And what about another uh, 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 way is environment adaptive. This is an underlying observation that are people upon the loss and disruption but can adapt. It's like a regulation theories and then they need to fit into the environment survival. Survival, right? So a uh, change is based on the building, uh, building a new organization or uh, gradually transporting people uh, to old to new structure. Right? So who can see that? And uh, if you have and then uh, not suddenly everything is maybe chaotic and they need to know the whole building structures so like yeah, that's the example, right? And structures and they need to know. So, uh, selection factors are uh, kind of extended over changes. And so, but if you want to use this uh, way in the world, uh, to availability for appropriate personalities for seeing the new organization, seeing the new organizations, right? So, think about it. And, uh, uh, example is kind of you want to you know, build a new organization, so how can you do that? Right? And that is so. Um, uh, there's examples, and then here is your four types of your know, changes, and then uh, depends on the situation, maybe you could use a different type of your know, you know, strategy, you know, strategy of changes, right? Here's another model that uh, uh, for changes and who's coming the action research models and then uh, here yeah that is a uh, maybe I think the slide is kind of overlap right and then yeah I'm sorry that so uh, we already uh, uh, talk about uh, the his models the action research models and who's and coming up right. And there is a model for plant change. And then uh, uh, plant change is already we are, we are plan uh, for change in, in advance. And then and when come, times comes, and then you got to yeah, change it. And then here is yeah, problem solving models. And then uh, Lipet and uh, yeah, Lancet and then more soft uh, kind of suggested, right? And problem solving model is uh, okay, you gotta diagnose what's going on. So, problem is notice, identify, and define in this stage, diagnosis stage. And then, what about alternative yeah, solutions? So, um, like we already talked about the making decision, uh, making decisions uh, theories, and then uh, uh, what is the normative models, and then they try to consider the people are looking to be rational behavior, and then try to uh, what is a, get the what is a alternative as many as will come, right? Like that, and then. Uh, alternative solution is a variety of possible solution are developed and the action necessarily accomplished them outlines. So here is alternative solutions. And then we're going to select one that we think is the best and then select the best solution and then implant. And this is a, yeah. Uh, this is the best possible solution that is selected on the basis of its appropriateness and feasibility and the solution is applied implementation, right? And then I saw um, evaluation uh, oh, the action is coming up implementing the action is uh, monitored and uh, evaluate what, you know, how the uh, new uh, solution is uh, changes uh, affect and influence uh, the situations. 
that is the planned change model, right? Uh, no, yeah, and problem solving models. And then another one is kind of yeah, the uh, research, research development and diffusion utilization models uh, called RDDU models. And um, that one is, yeah, you can see the research and then develop and diffuse and then share the information from all the, the knowledge and then utilization. So uh, this one is kind of yeah, research mean that uh, so it's a very rely on the empirical and the rational process. So rational empirical approach, yeah, this yeah, rational empirical approach providing systematic framework for managing plant chain based on the research, right? It's really um, uh, as a systematic frame is there and then you gotta follow. And uh, so research leads to discovery and technique, yeah, but technique is uh, validated through the, the pilot testing and maybe you, yeah, trial, is a pilot testing and trial or the experimentation or then now modif yeah, then modify as appropriate what uh, practical use and then which one is the research, right? Research is to kind of you gotta find out which one is good. And diffuse it there and you find one and the what? The new knowledge and product and technique is a uh, yeah packed and appropriated and delivered to the market and to the people, right? That is a diffusion though. And then utilize. And that, that is a really uh, as a rational process when you change and maybe you could minimize the resistance. That's why this yeah, model is very really most applicable based on the research, right? And develop how what is uh, uh, what is we need to do, and then you gotta uh, uh, diffuse the you know, knowledge and skills and techniques, and then. so uh, when when there is a cooperative argument among the developer, user, and distributor, and then which one is better, and then you can use this one. This one is a yeah, best one, right? And when there is a yeah, political support and leadership that encourage use of the research, right? And then you can use this model. So really the most applicable. Then your yeah, problem solving model is kind of yeah, uh, it's, there is a clear it's a problem is going on, then maybe yeah, we can solve the problem is the problem. But this one is yeah. When I want to use, right? And then there is a, uh, uh, there is no agreement and among the uh, what is a stakeholder, uh, stakeholders, and then there is a kind of a, some support is a political support is there. And another is a social interaction models, and social interaction model is what? Uh, that's a still a rational approach to change. It's a, yeah, most of my is based on the rational, right? And uh, that is all. So social interaction model is well, assess the need for the change based on the communication and information from outside the system, from outside the system. And involve members of a change system in planning and implementation. So, um, sorry, you know, social interest model is that um, there is a kind of a, yeah, uh, we gotta, because it's from the outside, and we gotta communicate very well, and there is a proper information, right? And so, uh, so, and we need to kind of, yeah, uh, uh, adjust. To and there is a basic some idea that we need for the social interaction models and then um, knowledge. So there is a knowledge because the information, the 
leaders or the members or of the system have information about the proposed innovation? Of course. Right? Of course. And then persuasion, the uh, leaders and the administrator have a kind of a what? The right knowledge of the uh, information about the proposed inno innovation and the what? Uh, there is how can you persuade members? And so members of the system are provided with information leading to positive, sometimes negative attitude about the innovation proposed. So it's not a, when you present, when you persuade, and then shows the both sides, and negative and positive, and but uh, which one is emphasized, and then we, yeah, uh, because of the positive, positive uh, uh, attitude and aspect and the what can uh, uh, so persuade the members, even though there is a yeah, negative yeah, influence, right? That the persuasions. And then decision process. What is the decision? Uh, member of the system can accept and reject the proposed innovation. That's a decision. And what about confirmation? There is a confirmation from peers that the decision adopted or rejected was appropriate. That's a confirmation. And when is good, this model? When is the most effective? And when there is a support to establish ex external contact? Right? So when there is a support to establish external contact because you know, it's from outside the system, right? And when opportunity gather the external information are available. So uh, it's from outside and then it kind of, yeah, and we don't have any information is available and then it's hard to do that. So uh, should uh, uh, opportunity to get uh, external information right uh, available and what about uh, uh, there are funded to purchase product banks right maybe uh, we need any uh, things are uh, new from outside and then there is a desire to gain status and recognitions right and Sometimes uh, it's from outside it's new, mm -hmm. and then uh, maybe sometimes it's really good, and then they was a little bit of better good credit. So last time we talked about the uh, hospital system that my wife was working, and then one of the directors, and then she kind of innovated the whole system because the system is uh, um, uh, old and then she want to get the credit and she want to achieve something to that one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, status and then she wants yeah, status to control and she wants the recognition from others but something's happened and uh, she resigned and kind of yeah, she pushed away by the kind of, yeah, uh, other power. Yeah, then she lost. Yeah, she lost in the, uh, from the power game. Anyway, yeah, there is the yeah, social interaction model is there, and then linkage model. Linkage model is what? Uh, there is a lot of yeah. Uh, uh, there is a problem solving, and then. Uh, we already know the problem solving model and research development division and the social. They put together everything. That's a linkage model. Mm -hmm. uh, eclectic, call yeah, eclectic, yeah, eco, yeah, eclectic. Uh, yeah, they so put together and then they uh, produce a model. So here is uh, the linkage model and then. Uh, first step is what uh, identification of so what is a problem identified and defined clear 
And then there's a communication channel is needed, and the communication channel links with uh, link to the system to the outside stores are uh, established. Yeah, right? Communication is uh, established from outside source, not just inside. That's the communications. What about research? And then research is there. External information, skills, building the problem, define, sorting out the what required. That's all. we gotta know, right? And with the uh, outside information and skills. And what is the solution then? After research and focus, yeah, solve the problem. So, uh, assistance of external resources and solution to problem is identify or designate, yeah, design. I mean the design. So, this one is coming. You can you can see the communication and problem identifying the problem and research and but. It's not an inside, but it's like know, social interaction models and always from the out, yeah, resources from outside, and still they utilize it on doing models. And uh, implicate after that, and implication. So, and solution is applied and evaluation. So, the so linkage model is kind of, yeah, uh, they synthesize three you know, previous three models and then uh, you. Yeah, they collect, yeah, they used another, um, yeah, uh, create their models. That's a linkage model. And here is some. Uh, changes so linkage model is kind of yeah here it is yeah. uh, uh, maybe there's a, a strong pressure for the changes in behavior could be established by providing specific information desired by the group about itself and then behavior so uh, later on more central, relevant, and meaningful, in, meaningful information so, uh, to create a possibility for change here, right? Maybe uh, uh, we can skip this slide and then what about uh, change agent? Who's going to change? Think about this first, UPY schools, and yeah, clearly who's going to initiate. Maybe someone, the uh, administrator can do it, but someone delegate, yeah, the as an administrator delegate someone to do that, and then the, someone going to do it, right? So, change agent is a person, or sometimes person, sometimes a group, special group, task force group, and what? Organizations, sometimes organizations. Seeking to produce change in system, right? That's a change agent. You gotta clarify that. Who's gonna change? And then, what about the characteristic of uh, uh, effective change agent? Who can do it? And not everybody. Maybe. Uh, sometimes, even though uh, leader is not perfect, even though he has leadership, yeah, some yeah, administrators have leadership, but sometimes uh, uh, if someone is already, someone has a characteristic of a pioneer and then maybe really innovative characteristic and then maybe the person is right. Mm -hmm. yeah, when the person, maybe sometimes it's hard to do that and maybe you can form the group of people and then group, yeah, group will do it. But what is the characteristic of the changes? Change agent. It's really maybe uh, you could uh, recruit people 
recruitment, right? So really, they need to have uh, how to use the resources and kind of get and uh, maybe some uh, uh, as the right people they can recruit and then they can develop something and maybe everything is going on in control to until finish their jobs. That's the basic yeah, functions of the yeah, effectively change yeah, changing agents but um, that that's a, it's kind of yeah, it's not a it's an absolute characteristic, but sometimes and but uh, this one is like kind of yeah, rep, uh, gives you some idea about who's gonna be change agent, right? What about factors say that uh, uh, is in yeah reducing resistance to change? What is the uh, factors reducing kind of resistance? Yeah, I'm sorry that I misspelling in reducing the yeah, resistance. Mm. A and then that's no A, right? And Q suggests that uh, uh, the change process need to take into account the need, attitude, and belief of the people involved as well as the force of the organization. So, um, and so that's the process. That's why, uh, uh, how can we reduce the, uh, the resistance and then we're going to consider the need and the attitude and belief of the people involved, right? And another thing is that the, uh, the, uh, the greater prestige of the provider and the greater influence that, that she can uh, export for the changes. So um, maybe if you have really had uh, the credible and uh, trusted, yeah, trusted and leaders, and maybe they lead the change and then what? Uh, uh, it's easy and then reduce the what? The resistance. That's true. And here it is. That is the huge set and then the factor said and reducing re resistance to change and then what about Rondon said? Rondon said that uh, he said that evaluate the characteristic of a chain, consider the complexity and then psychological and financial cost and extent to which the purpose and extended the intended outcome are. It's a clear and yeah, uh, they need to yeah they need to be clear and then amount of the work mutual agreement so. And if you kind of present all this stuff and then yeah, you can, and change and then maybe less. And consider who and what is affected by the work that is done and the working and the personal relationship to those affected, of course, right? Uh, who's going to be affected and then and how it's going to be affect the work and then why we change it by some, or what about uh, our outcome, right? Uh, what kind of process we need like this? And then uh, envision how the change will be implemented always. And then just think about people around you who got involved in change and they can draw the mental pictures. And that one helps to reduce what? The uncertainty to minimum. Oh yeah, we are going to be like that and then they can uh, follow, they can do that one. So always uh, be prepared for the multiple innovations and then uh, not just maybe there is, yeah, even though there is some stage maybe plan and to get innovation and but uh, whenever something is kind of happens and then it can be, 
yeah, uh, affect changes or changes, and maybe you couldn't get a innovation is there, and you know, a lot of stage and innovation, you know, yeah, kind of adjusting process, and then maybe yeah, you know, less you know, with less uh, resistance, and we can go through the, the changes without blaming others. So, <clears throat> uh, think about what is the uh, effective educational changes. What about effective educational changes? Sometimes it's a, um, this is really yeah, related, should be related to education. There's a goal of education, right? But uh, we gotta know that there is a uh, pressure group. Yeah. Uh, pressure groups out there and political pressures out there and then what well, and community pressures out there and well, parent pressures out there right and but sometimes uh, everybody yeah every groups and uh, have their own agenda but uh, what is the what well, what are the, when you make a change and think about what is the uh, ultimate, uh, why, why the, why, why need to change? Why need to change? For whom we need to change, right? And so, Depends on the yeah, school situation and school cultures and climate and leadership and a lot of things is related to yeah, each other related. So maybe and if you don't have any and uh, idea about oh we gotta change it, but Maybe consultation is really helpful from outside, and then there's a lot of experts out there, and then maybe you can do it, you can bother, you yeah, can get some information from outside, like a social interaction models, and then, um, but still, we cannot say which one is right or wrong, but still, we gotta uh, think about which uh, theories, which uh, model is kind of, yeah. Uh, fit into our uh, the, our situation, right? Uh, uh, the situation that the organization is in. So, and then especially at schools, and then uh, trying to change. So uh, we are kind of a, we need to uh, uh, understand what kind of model is out there, and then evaluate. We consider the values evaluation and analyze our situation and try to pick one model and then work with the yeah, leaders, right? But yeah, maybe it's a good for, um, but always this is not a profit organizations. This is a school organization, right? School institute, right? So maybe uh, you gotta keep that in mind. And before we close the uh, this class and then uh, I want to remember the professional standard of education leaders uh, standard and by national policy for the for education and administration. Uh, I already share uh, maybe you know one of the class uh, one of the class and then and because uh, we need to find leaders, right? Or even maybe there's a lot of leader, yeah, a lot of leaders out there, but sometimes uh, their personality, their kind of a yeah, uh, world view, and their direction of life is different, right? They are think they are different. So, but uh, even though they have their personal uh, yeah, stuff, and they were still. As an educational or administrator, uh, at least they are thinking about uh, this quality to become a leader of the school. And administrators, as the leaders, should be thinking about 
ambition, you know, visions, missions, and core values of the school. What is the vision? What are you looking for? How, how the leaders want to make this super life? And there is a method that is there. And then there is a specific what is the functions and purpose and actions. And what about values? How can you, uh, how can you uh, carry out these on uh, with values? Another thing is the uh, ethics and professional norms. We need the integrity, right? We need ethic and professional kind of attitude and you know, spirit. Uh, nowadays, yeah, a lot of people are losing the professionalism and ethics. Yeah, that's why the organizations have collapsed. They just impact a lot. And what about this, yeah, uh, how can you uh, respond to the diversity? Equity and cultural responsiveness. You know? It's a big issue nowadays, right? What is the equality and equity? I already give you some explanation. And then equality, and then you know, like uh, when you see the bag, and then like, I, that's a definition that I learned from the, uh, uh, the, the fit that's coming in us, the online. And, and uh, equality is whether you are tall or not, and you just kind of stand up and then you consider back together. Maybe that's the outside window, window, right? We can see the outside of the window, and then I'm tall enough, I can see, but a little bit, uh, uh, you can see more outside. But if you're a little bit shorter than I, and then their kind of view is a little bit limited, we cannot see the bottom very well. But so small is a, a really small and then they only see the outside. That is about they don't they don't uh, they don't consider the height but see the chance to outside. That's the equality. But equity is that okay, let's to see the same height. And then I'm six feet and my next is a five feet and then give them booster one 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 feet booster. And the other one is a three feet, and then let's give them three, yeah, three feet yeah, booster so that they can see the outside in six, yeah, six, yeah, six feet tall height, right? That is equity. So, uh, how can you consider equity and cultural differences? Always, yeah, that's really important. What about? have an idea about curriculums and instructions and assessment. How can we assess the student, yeah, student achievement? How can we assess what? Uh, the teachers, how can we assess self as administrator? And self, yeah, self, and then maybe that one is a yeah, administrator assessment from the, yeah, by the district. And there is the kind of communicable care and support for students. Is there? How much? Basically, I'm a little job, but still really community of care and support for students. That's the education though. If they don't have, they should be an administrator. And what about professional capacity of the school personnel? How can you hire people and how can you see right person for the student? Well, I know sometimes if you don't have any professional capacity for school personnel and then you don't know how they treat the student. I know sometimes it's hard to control all the students here and there and the, uh, my kids said it. they don't think about what they're doing and they say they are so mean. So why and they don't talk about all the incidents? Sometimes makes sense, but I know. So you gotta know the which one is the right person to be hired for school. 
that they need current capacity. What is professional community for the teachers and staff? How can they uh, make the communities, school community for teachers and their te uh, staff? And how can we relate to the communities and family? We are really uh, thinking about children's education, right? And uh, how can you operate schools and manage them? Manage the schools, right? That's a lot of things that we've got to do it to have. And then what about school improvement? You go to another school and then see the schools and maybe you can uh, uh, what's up? because of the uh, your leadership, you know, what's up? because of the leadership and the, uh, the school improve, right? And that is yeah, kind of stand, professional standard of education leaders. And think about it and if you are interested and then you know, maybe uh, this quality is kind of needed for the really good uh, leaders for education. And I hope that uh, this class is about uh, what is up? Uh, this class about uh, it's not a uh, uh, it's a little bit kind of it's for the uh, people who are really interested in uh, administrator uh, become an administrator. So we can learn about uh, how can operate schools, how can we manage the schools as a uh, leader who can take responsibility for schools, right? And maybe uh, as a teachers, as a staff, and then uh, maybe parents, and then maybe you can deal with all kind of issues when you're learning to be part of the school. So, and I hope that you guys have some uh, understanding of the how you run the schools and what is involved and then what what we need and what we have to accept it and not to know it. And, but I don't provide some specific kind of issues so like uh, safety issues and then the teachers' salary issues and then nowadays you know, a couple of days ago this uh, was all and uh, and I. But there is a yeah, school district has kind of uh, uh, yeah, yeah, they don't yeah, uh, uh, teachers kind of yeah, uh, demonstrated and they uh, close the schools and like that and then uh, what about the uh, uh, gun control safety issue at schools and uh, there's a lot of issues are going on, but still, uh, that one is uh, already uh, we can uh, solve the problem with a lot of with the, the with the process and the make them. Uh, there is there is a principle needed to tackle this problem, right? At schools, that's why we don't deal with the specific kind of your uh, uh, issues at schools, but still, uh, we are, we are talk of, yeah we talk about the basic idea of uh, what we need for that, right? And then uh, uh, how, how can we uh, run the school effectively, right? So basically uh, we consider schools and uh, school as an organization and then try to get a systematic thinking. It's not an aggregate yeah, aggregated thinking, right? Just a free theory and then and not just connected, but analyzed, and there's a lot of different things out there not connected, that interact, but, but systematic is that there's a lot of different things, but they try to put together and work together, right? And so based on the yeah, systematic thinking, we, yeah, and we try to understand what the school as an organization. So 
we so a lot of things from the yeah power the idea from the organization but still yeah need but school does not produce the work the profit but still this organization has some goals to achieve right I hope this so you guys have some idea from the this class and then um yeah uh, there are many things are kind of new to me, but still trying to uh, guide the class. But I hope that it's helpful for you guys. So if you have any questions, and just let me know. And even though it's a class is done, and then I still, yeah, I'm willing to yeah, discuss with you guys. And then maybe you can get my email to the, uh, 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 the office, and then you can contact me, right? So, uh, uh, God bless you and for the rest of your year, yeah, this year, and then, yeah, yeah, for the step of your life. All right, see you around and bye.